World of Warcraft Classic launched this week, which means several things. MMOs are going to be in the public consciousness more than they have been for a long time. Smaller MMOs might see a drop in players or just outright die. And I probably haven't showered in about four days. And two of these points raise an interesting question. What happens to dead MMOs? Well, if you live in the twisted nightmare world of itch.io, pagan autogeny is what happens. Oh, good lord, where to begin with this one? Well, uh, firstly, I think this is a haunted game. More on that later. But for now, let me tell you, it's not actually an MMO. It's an art piece, at least I think it's an art piece, that depicts an abandoned and decomposing MMO. No regular MMO, mind you. It's a 90s MMO, complete with retro graphics, clunky gameplay, obscure objectives, and a whole lot of user hostility. Now, usually on this channel, I review games, but this game is so unbelievably strange that instead, I'm just gonna document my journey through it. So we open the game and- Oh! Uh, oh, okay. That's an intro. The home of user-hostile design. Well, I, I can't dispute that. And apparently we're logging in as Vivian. And then we're into it. And, well, a few questions are raised here. What is happening? What is up with the fog? Vivian? And like all good questions, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna answer them. And thus begins day one. Well, we're in a mall of sorts. Everything is a bit pink, and we get this helpful tutorial. I to open inventory, which shows us a weapon, armor, and two tarot card slots. I guess they're trinkets of some kind. And K to open skills, which shows that we have the five standard skills that all MMORPGs have. Estrogen, body forging, caffeine, poetry, and murder. So, uh, with, with that information, let's explore and see what's poppin'. In the mall, I find a sword, some estrogen, some poetry, a cursed television, some caffeine, the screams of the damned, some more estrogen, and an arm. Thinking that the arm is a bit too intimidating, I turn around to inspect the screams of the damned, which eventually turns out to be an enormous floating torso that annihilates me upon contact. Yep, so we, uh, we, we start again. I elect to leave the mall, taking the arm with me as I enter what can only be described as Silent Hill. And very suddenly, I yearn for the days where all I had to worry about was the screaming souls of the fallen because this place is creepy as shit. Nonetheless, I push on and find a shotgun, a leg, a pistol, a cursed mask, a truly ominous black silhouette, which I destroy because, I don't know, it, it freaked me out. At least it increased my murder skill. And after this, I find a factory with a television, which, when used, summons a laughing skull that once again <laughs> annihilates me. Not as quickly as the torso, but swiftly nonetheless. In an unprecedented act of mercy, the game does not reset my progress this time, though it just boots me back to the start of Silent Hill. And you may be noticing a pattern, that pattern being absolute confusion and equal amounts of fear. That's because this game is emulating a kind of horror that has been around for decades, but has only been made popular, at least by niche horror standards, in the last 15 years or so. Digital horror. Or cyber horror. Code horror. It doesn't really have a name, from what I can tell, but it's definitely a thing. And it stems from the same instinctual fear that makes things such as Cujo, the Children of the Corn, and Terminator effective. The fear of succession. The fear of the things we raise rebelling against us. But with digital horror, or whatever you want to call it, there's an extra layer. With Cujo, tamed life is rebelling. With Children of the Corn, created life is rebelling. And with Terminator, synthetic life is rebelling. But with programs, code, and pixels, there is no life. Until it rebels. A hypothetical organic phenomenon by which living organisms are created from non-living matter. Autogenesis. Or autogeny. This game markets itself as delivering the experience of a dead MMO, but the reality is far more haunting. You're experiencing a living MMO. Let's keep exploring. I find a car, which surprisingly actually works, and it takes us to the Nightmare Realm. And in the Nightmare Realm, I encounter, down this nightmare street, this statue. And when I interact with it, it says, Martyr is restrained. You know what time it is. <music> Cursed phrases. Every so often you come across a collection of words which is, to put it simply, haunted. For whatever reason, these words simply unnerve you. Of course, it will vary from person to person, but here's a list of cursed phrases that invoke particularly strong emotion in me. A good way to differentiate between these and other regular scary phrases is to think how you'd react if a stranger came and said this to you on a bus. If someone leans over and says, I'm going to kill you, you'd be like, 
<laughs> yeah, all right, mate. But if somebody leans over and says, the dead scream on Jupiter, you'd be like, <laughs> what? And you'd try to laugh it off, but for a few days you'd be thinking, the, the dead scream on... what? And with the level of context given here, martyr is restrained is an excellent example of a cursed phrase. Now typically the shorter the phrases are, the better, and there's a link in the description to an excellent use of a one word cursed phrase. Anyway, getting back to it, this is where I stopped for day one. I was sufficiently creeped out. I went into my second day with an air of confidence because I remembered this is based on MMORPGs. That means if I wanted to get strong enough to beat the Laffy Skull and Floaty Torso, I'd have to grind. But before that, I'd actually have to find somewhere to grind. Enter the desert. You may notice a pretty stark contrast between the previous dark and ominous levels and this bright and energetic one. If this surprises you, you've not played MMOs. This barren, craggy land borders this lush jungle. This tropical paradise borders and is further north than this frozen wasteland. Consistency is not a big concern in MMOs, and Pagan is painfully aware of that. Anyway, the only enemies here are these, uh, not-so-shining trapezohedrons, which drop stuff on death. What these things do? Uh, I have no idea. So I just try on everything. Some items make me faster, some slower, some stronger, some weaker, I have no clue what is going on. And then I realized this is not inspired by MMOs, this is inspired by 90s MMOs, and I would have to do something I haven't done earnestly in about 15 years. Consult the game's manual. Jesus, remember when manuals were the heart and soul of game know-how? I do. And it was shit. Anyway, now I understand roughly what these items do and I can farm the good ones. Overall, the desert level is by far the least cursed area. It even has a few NPCs who are there, I guess. At least they're mostly there. And I find a boss, but we'll get to him soon. For now, there's one other area to explore. Scotland. Or Norway. Or Canada. Either which way, it doesn't really matter, they're all good. By far the most tame area, but it still has a bit of the spooky factor. And then I come across this temple area and something interesting happens. I find this unfinished statue and learn that I can add these limbs that I found to it. Watch what happens when I do. Um... So, we, uh, we respawn back at the mall with all of our stuff, and we, uh, we try to forget that that whole thing happened. And let's kill us some bosses. Silent Hill boss. Boney Jones. He's actually pretty easy. You can even farm him if you like. Scotland boss. Voodoo Kermit. Also pretty easy, just run around him and don't get hit by the things he shoots. Desert boss. Bug. This guy takes a really long time. Like a, like a really long time. Mall boss. Um, I don't know, Chester? Stupidly easy, just bap him a few times and he dies. Each one of these boys dropped a unique tarot card that you can trade in for another tarot card. And that new card we got can be handed in at this altar, which happens to be directly below the madness that happened last time. So I guess we try that again. Alright, I take it back. Martyr is restrained is not a cursed phrase. None of the ones I mentioned are. In fact, they're all blessed in comparison to the martyr roams free. That is the most disturbing thing I have ever- So you know, the whole world has changed now that the martyr room is free. Places have changed colors.
despite all of the stuff I've done, I don't think I've even covered half of what this game wants to show. I might stream the rest. In the great category because of how unique it is and how much pure terror it manages to create using. With that all in mind, thanks for watching. Goodbye.